Okay, we're back. If at first you don't succeed, you pick yourself up and you try again. Miss Jasper Music, welcome on in. Mega Miss Little Marie <laughs> Kismic. Oh my goodness, we're back. Can you all hear me? Got the right angles. <laughs> You know, hey, it's going to be trial and error. We can see that. But welcome on in. How are you all feeling? Yes, I'm so glad that we are back. We can definitely know that we are back and we are checking in. Yes, Tramel, we are back. Thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Welcome on in. It's been a long time. Hey, y'all. Hey, Whitney. Welcome on in. Dante, we in the building. We are in the building, y'all. We are in the building for real this time. We are like legit in the building. <laughs> I feel like I can breathe again. I, I feel like I'm Tony Braxton. I can breathe again. I can breathe again. I can literally actually breathe again. Breathe again. So we're going to start this all over. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone for having so much patience. My goodness. My goodness. Having so much patience. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Never give up in real time. Well, 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 here's the thing. I think sometimes we do need to give up. Let me be clear. I think sometimes we do need to give up, but this wasn't one of those times. This was one of those times where I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I want to say, but this was one of those times where I found the system. I want you all to, to just hear this. I found a system that was easy. L listen at me, like come in close for this. I found a system that was easy. That's what I was using. It was easy. I didn't have to do too much. It was kind of like click and go. It didn't require me to step outside my comfort zone. I really was feeling the vibe because it was so easy, like literally easier than any time I've ever gone live. It was that easy, you guys. Almost, even though there's really no such thing, but this energy we're coming into is this energy, it almost was too good to be true. And even though I think it is some things that I can use for a lot of things, it's not what I need to be using for streaming and going live in this way. Because I already know what I need to be using, but it's kind of a big learning curve. <laughs> so I literally, low key, was trying to find an easy way to do it. So, hmm. it didn't work. It didn't work. It did not work. At least not tonight. Welcome in, Firebird. Good to see you. Let's pull some cards. How we feel about that? I haven't done that in a minute. Let's pull some cards here really, really quick. And also, shout out to Self-Invested, everybody who's a part of Self-Invested University, sending them so much love as well. And uh, also the Divine Priestess, sending them so much love as well too. Hopefully everyone finds their way back over. Okay, so the number is five. I'm gonna put it right here, okay? So you all just gotta trust me. Wait, if I can count. One, two, three, four, Five. All right. This is how this is going to work. We're all going to do the readings. Every single one of us, you all with me. Um, I, um, 
I'm not using my deck tonight. I'm not using any of my decks tonight. I'm going to pull from some decks. You know, over the years, people have sent me so many decks. And some I haven't even bust the plastic on yet. So I think it'd be really cool. We got some Oracle. We got some Tarot. We got some... We got some... It'll come to me. We got some, we got all kinds of decks. I got all kinds of decks, right? So let's, let's, let's go with them. Here goes the five. Here goes the five cards. Okay. All right. Here we go. First card. This is for the collective energy for this weekend. Let me put them over here before I do something goofy. We ready? First card. Can y'all see that? Is it the right way? Strawberry moon. Strawberry moon. Look at that. We are in the energy of the moon's energy, but this is the strawberry moon energy. And it says here, invoke the goddess of love. When I think about the goddess of love, she's too far away. I can't go get her right now. But when I think about the goddess of love, and I see the swan, the first thing that comes to mind is the goddess, the Hindu goddess, Sarah's body, because she rides on the lotus petal, petal and a swan. You can often find her on the lotus petal and the swan. But let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this energy right here. The goddess Saras Vedi. If you don't know who she is, look her up. She is the goddess who sits is said to sit over in her mythology over all of creativity. Over all of creativity. All of creativity. So you will often find her riding very gently on the back of a swan. And you will see her playing what is known, it's like a lyre, right? It's like a lyre, but it's also connected to the constellation, constellation the lyre, the lyre energy. It's an instrument. This strawberry moon is a moon of healing. But when we think about invoking the goddess of love, we're talking about that energy. We're talking about that energy. Who knows what moon cycle we're in? What phase is the moon here? We have the full moon that is coming up and the full moon will be coming up around the first of the month here. Now, regardless of the November 1st, the, the moon uh, coming up, regardless if it's a strawberry moon or or not, regardless of what it is, because right now the moon is in the last quarter. It's a time of completion. So I can see why this strawberry moon is coming up. This is a time of completion. You're working on projects. You have things that you're doing at this particular time. It's in its last quarter of the moon. Time of completion. It's time for a reorientation. It's also for going back and taking responsibility over things you did not complete. So you're looking back over the things you did not complete. You can have great healing here because these things that came up for you during this particular time that you have not done and you have not completed, this is a time that you can actually do that. So I want you to get into that. Just kind of feel that vibe. And when you see that pink energy, of course, it's going to relate to love, right? The pink energy is going to relate to love. Invoke the goddess of love. Because this is a weekend that's all about two things. If we are talking about the heart chakra, another color connected with the heart chakra is the color pink. And pink is that beautiful protective energy, that vibration 
that really helps engulf self-love. So this is healing energy, very healing. It's time that we can have healing through our actions. We can have healing through completion. We can have healing to really reorient in ourselves of where we are and where we've been. We can have lots of healing. All right. That's card number one. Card number two. <laughs> we got a lot going on with the moon energy. Look at this one. Can you all see that? Let's see if we can get that in there. That says the cold moon. The cold moon. Welcome in, Apple Jacks. Love that name. The cold moon. And for those of us on the Western Hemisphere, we are in the cold moon. These moons coming in regardless of what phase, what cycle they're in. It's a cold moon, but what are we talking about uh, when we look at this from more of a metaphysical way of the cold moon? The cold moon energy is another moon. Look at that, both healing. Both of these are healing. They're telling you to use the energy of the moon for healing. And so the cold moon talks about yin and yang energy. So right there, we're balancing out things in our lives. So whenever you see yin and yang, it's about bringing that balance from within, bringing that balance. Most of the sessions I did today, this is a lot what we talked about. And even though I refer to it as the different way, I want y'all to see down there at the bottom, it talks about shadow work. And we know shadow work is what, so family? Put inside the blue room, if we know what the elevated or the highest vibration of shadow work that I so affectionately renamed many, many moons ago, what is shadow work? When we talk about shadow work, there it is. You got it, Jas Jocelyn. Self-love. So this is a great weekend to do self-love and you can't make this up for all of my astrology babies out there. Look at the bottom, unconscious beliefs. This is what's happening right now. Unconscious beliefs are coming to the surface and you're being challenged with that unconscious belief. You've seen how I was challenged tonight to even come on. You've seen how challenged I was. Right now, the universe is saying, hey, do you really think you can pull this off, Miss Blue, what you're trying to do? Do you really think you're going to step into this new era and you're going to make these shifts, these things that maybe you weren't able to accomplish before? Do you really think you're going to be able to do it this time? Do you really think you can make that shit happen? Who told you you could do that? Who told you that you could be so bold with your gorgeous goodness? that you just spread it all out into the world and think it's going to happen. We're all being challenged with this. I talked about this coming up for the next couple of weeks. Listen, listen, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And so we, we are here. So this is our second card collective for the weekend. Let me know what you all are getting for this. And if you're listening to this afterwards, let me know because our first pull, our first energy that's coming up is the strawberry moon, this beautiful swan swimming in this beautiful, beautiful waters, the pink waters. And it says, invoke the goddess of love. 
So that could be any goddess of love. We have lots of them. But when you think about their symbolism, their animal totems, the goddess Servati, there she is. See her? See her on her swan? I've had her for many, many years. Look at her. Look at the card. You can't make that up. There it is. You see the swan? And look at her. She's on my altar there. See that? That's her playing the instrument, sitting on the back of the swan. But often you can find her. She will be... Um, Inside the lotus flower. Inside the lotus flower. Mm -hmm. So, I want you all to see this. Can't make this up. This is our first energy pull. Our second energy pull. We're dealing with a lot of the moon energy. And when we think about the moon energy, I want you to think about the moon because it really represents your inner landscape. It represents what's going on internally with you. It represents what's happening on the inner landscape. And Shaylin, I love what you just came up with. You're right. It was about the strawberry moon. And you said, I'm thinking about how strawberry had seeds on the sur seeds on the surface, which will speak to this energy of this weekend. It's 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 sort of like wearing your heart on your sleeve. It's like having your heart on your sleeve or having your visions, your thoughts, the things that you desire, the things that you want to do and uh, B and how you want to show up, the adjustments you're making, because many of us, we've been making these adjustments since early March. Early March. So March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So we're getting ready to come into that nine-month period, almost. Okay, Iris. Iris kind of remind you of this energy and many of you spoke about this this energy is rebellion it's war it's anger it's revenge it's the female warrior goddess the female warrior goddess this is the energy that's here. Now, don't be mistaken. It's represented to all of us, inside all of us. And so these are some of the things that we talked about in the last show, how this isn't the time to pick a fight. You understand? Or even yourself, you may feel some anger. You may feel some rage come up or you may be having these flashbacks of things that happen that you felt like you just didn't really get out what you needed to get out. Sacred Altar said, I was just writing a poem about anger the other day. Yeah, because it's in the atmosphere. It's in the atmosphere. But this is where your magic lies. Because it wants you to go deeper into this anger, to, to release it, to make peace with it, to resolve it within yourself, and to also not allow it to be a total distraction of where you're headed. You don't want this to distract you from where you're headed. This is why we have to focus on this energy. You have to get creative. You have to get creative. You have to channel that energy. You have to begin to start doing the alchemy with this energy. Otherwise, it will consume you. It will consume you and you will miss your opportunity. 
you will miss it. You will miss this opportunity. So this is a beautiful time for you to channel this energy in a very powerful way. Because this is the time right now where we're getting the opportunity to yet again use our feelings and our emotions, our true feelings and our true authentic emotions and come to a resolution. Come to a resolution because we're only angry about coulda, shoulda, woulda. Something we felt we coulda did, we shoulda did, and we wish we woulda did. We're only angry about the past. We're only angry about the past. And here's the thing. It's nothing wrong with being angry. You just can't live there. It's not a house you can live in. You can't live there or you will burn within the house. You will die within the house. We are in Scorpio season. Remember, Scorpio wants to uncover the truth. And once you can uncover the truth of a situation, that anger should be able to transmute. So ask yourself if there is something uh, that you are angry about. Ask yourself, what are you really angry about? Because once you uncover the truth, and even if it's just that acknowledgement to yourself, it doesn't have to be to the world. It doesn't have to be per se to the person. Some of the people we're angry about aren't even in our lives anymore. And can we say ashe to that? I want you to understand you can't live in this state. It will start to destroy your mind. It will start to destroy your body. It will destroy your energy, depletes your energy. And then it will start to seep into your day-to-day -day life. Into your day-to-day -day life. And anger does affect the liver. It can. But really, anger, resentment, uh, rage, revenge, jealousy in women, it will affect your reproductive organs, especially if this anger is towards your mother or a feminine figure. And for men, this is going to affect your godads. It's going to affect your godads. It's going to affect the rest of your reproductive organs. But mainly men carry guilt in that particular area of their body. Anger, all of this, these things in women, it begins to start breaking down the reproductive organs. And by the time it breaks down these reproductive organs, then it starts to move to other places within the body such as the liver, all of these things. So no, that's a lot of that energetic energy. Lance said, I heard that wisdom and mercy will bring us to a higher state of being. We would judge the goodness in others. I like that. I like that. How you live er. How you live er. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And yes, thank you, Tramel. As I always say, forward giving, forgive, forgiveness. But often what happens is 
you have to forgive yourself. A lot of times we are constantly looking for the other person involved in the situation or whatever the place is involved in the situation to resolve itself before we forgive ourselves. But you don't have to forgive. You don't have to forgive anyone, but you should forgive yourself. That's who you should start with. Okay, so we got three cards. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ooh, I love it. Look what we got. Let me put it up. This is gonna speak to 2024. The fixed star, Draco, the dragon. You see that? You see the dragon there? Draco, yeah. Draco of the dragon. This is about evolution through love, which is what we all have been talking about. This is about kundalini energy. And this is about the fire of life. Remember here, we were talking about this rebellious spirit, this war spirit, this fire-like energy of Eris. We were talking about revenge and the female warrior and how to use that in a positive way. And this is the evolution of what we're getting collectively to move through the evolution through love. It's what causes the kundalini energy to rise. And it's that fire of life, which takes us back to the heart energy, where that eternal flame is always burning. It's always burning. King said he just got through doing his dragon breathing. Yes, very powerful. Okay, and so here we go. I think this is our last card. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is our last one. Y'all ready? We're going to talk about this collective reading and then we're going to move on. But look, right here, the God happy. <laughs> you can't make this up. The Egyptian God happy. Take a look at that. The Egyptian god Happy, one of the gods in ancient Kemet that is associated with the Nile River. It's connected to the planet, the moon and Uranus. Very powerful, passionate, caring, kind, gentle, and abundance. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, the God happy. So this is our collective energy for this week. For this weekend, I am really loving this. Let me put this in order. I want to go back over them really, really quick. So first one, here we go. And I want you all to look at the cards. Let's take a few moments. And in one sentence, I want you to sum up what you take from this collective reading. So this is the healing moon, the strawberry moon with the swan and the pink vibes that's coming in. And it's about, it's invoking the goddess of love. Here we go. The next one, moon healing, cold moon, yin and yang energy, shadow work, and about unconscious beliefs. unconscious beliefs. You see that? Okay. Eris, astrology planet, rebellious war, anger, revenge, and the female goddess. Here we go. Ooh, I am loving what you guys are coming up with. Next, the thick star, Draco of the dragon. There we go. This is about evolution through love. It's about kundalini energy, and it's about the fire of life. And then last for this weekend's energy, we have the God happy. 
in Egyptian astrology, the god of the Nile. Look at that. It's about passion, caring, gentle, and kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love you guys. Let me see. Let me see. We got it. Let's see. Acceptance versus resistance to be like water. Absolutely love that. I feel as if we are welcoming the energy of the mother hmm. with lots of lessons and ascension. Absolutely love that. Love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the other thing. Um, before I get ready to take your questions, I have an announcement uh, that I want to make. I, a couple of weeks ago, I was sharing some things with you all, particularly when it came to, um, particularly when it came to the remix, Planet Remix, and how I seen Planet Remix moving forward, um, make some changes and spirit was really calling me to make some changes. And the change of the um, Alchemy Collective is still here. But I'm also going to be starting another radio show, another podcast, another podcast. And clear as day, I went back and I was looking at my notes from 2015, 2016, 2017, and I kept seeing this whole theme of where I was using that whole pretty, pretty girl, the whole pretty thing that was coming up. And it came to me because there was a workshop we did, I want to say at the beginning of 2019. And honestly, I went back and I was looking at my notes and when we were coming up with the name of the workshop, I wanted, I would have really preferred to have named, put this in the name as well too. And you all have heard me mention this. So I'm going to give you the name. I'm so excited. I'm going to launch it here live, um, but it's coming soon, the new podcast. And the name of the new podcast is The Pretty Matrix. And I'm going to explain to you an esoteric, metaphysical, uh, occult terms, what pretty means. Because it doesn't mean what the world thinks it means. It has a deep spiritual a very transformative and a very esoteric meaning. So here's what I would love for you all to do. I just put it in chat and I want you to go to the channel, click the link, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get the notifications once the Pretty Matrix goes live. Once that pretty matrix goes live and have no fear, it's not just going to be for us girls, it's for everyone. And when we look at the word pretty, esoterically, and really each and every single energy that is held within pretty has a deep spiritual meaning, if you can tap into it because the P represents the potential. It represents the limitless energy and the divine potential within each soul that is waiting to be awakened. And there's so many different levels to the pretty matrix that we have all been diving into. And really we can continue to uncover and discover because it is a part of the awakening of this potential. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I wanted to give you that. The R is the residence, and it's about aligning with your soul's inner frequency with the universe. 
I wish y'all can see this. I'm gonna keep this email that I wrote literally back in 2017. So there you go. We got a lot going on. The alchemy, the alchemy collective. And so now we have the pretty matrix. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Personal year right here. Hopefully y'all can see that. It's not backwards and you can see it. If you look at the personal year of nine, if you see this here, Maria, that zero here, that zero, looks like a zero, but it's really an egg. Tell you what that egg is for. Okay, so here we go. Can y'all see that? I hope y'all can see that. Hopefully it's right for you. So if you see the personal year of nine, if you look at the look at the number nine, you see the top part, part, this represents the egg. This part here represents the sperm. So it's a year of creation. It's a powerful year of creation. It has a lot of creation energy in it, but it is creation through letting go. It's creation through letting go. Also, whenever you see this circle, it represents protection. This is protection. And here where you see this energy of the sperm, it represents intention and action. But the nine personal year, one of the things that I have found with the nine personal year, you have a lot of Venus energy that is in a nine personal year because Venus is connected to the reproductive organs, to the sex glands, the sex organs. That's what Venus is connected to. So you're able to pull in lots of love this year. It's also lots of protection that's there. And with your intention and in taking action, you can have the power of creation um, in this personal year of nine. Because what's going to happen is it's going to be a lot of things for you to close out of your life, to let go in your life that needs to be let go of in your life. And through that letting go, through that letting go, you're going to elevate yourself to a whole nother level. And you might have been feeling this four or five months out. So there you go. You will be stepping into your personal year of nine. If there's anyone else here uh, that is stepping into that personal year of nine, I want you to take that and apply it to your life of how you see things playing out for you. And really look at the last four to five months of your life. And those last four to five months, you will see that either you've been in the position where you have lost things, things have been taken from you, um, things might have seemed a little unstable for you because these are things the universe is putting you back into your proper alignment, proper alignment alignment. It's putting you exactly where you need to be to elevate yourself. So lots of time in a personal year of nine uh, to do journaling, you know, to do things, to get your thoughts out, to share those thoughts about yourself and, you know, making sure that you're intentional about your actions and that you know that you are dealing with extra protection and that protection is coming through that love. Remember, you're going to have more favor when it comes to the energy of love. As long as you maintain and hold that love within yourself, then you're going to be able to maneuver through all the things that is coming for you because the universe is really sort of building you up to say, what are some of the things you want to let go of for the things that you want to elevate yourself to? Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. Tramel, you've been in the personal year of nine since May. So I, I know you can understand that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Extra support. And let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Maria. Maria. Okay. Maria says, I feel calm energy. Well, there you go, Maria. I want to send you so much love there. So much love. Uh -huh. Maria, your birthday is 1025. Wait, is that the same as, as the other Maria? Y'all have the same birthday? No, she 27, you 25. Okay, let's see. So you were born October 25. And let's look at your personal year. We don't need the year, dear. Just the, we're just doing the personal year. So five and three is eight and eight and eight is 16. You are moving into the ooh, personal year of seven. Let's see, Maria. Here we go. Ooh, you're going to love this one. Personal year of seven. Am I entertaining y'all enough? <laughs> Am I? And I wish the other thing would work, but we're, we're not going to talk about it. We are not going to talk about it. Almost done. Almost done. Um, I hope y'all can read my writing or understand it. Um, what else? Okay, here we go, Maria. Oh, I've never been good at the Pictionary. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can take a, take a look at the personal year of seven. And so hopefully you can see that. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So the personal year of seven, if you look at the seven there, you see how the seven goes like this and it comes down. One of the things you see this, this is a little crown here, right? And I have stay open here because this is the year of what they call the spiritual council. 
Uh, so what's going to happen is, and you've probably been feeling this, that even though you may have your own understanding about your life and where you are in your life, many people who are around you is going to be coming to you to ask you for insight insight. And a portion of that is going to be because um, deeply when you move into this energy, and I'm sure you've been feeling it, Maria, for the last, uh, Marie, for the last maybe three to four months, uh, there's been this sort of deep calling uh, for you to go inward to really start to understand more about who you are Um spiritually but also how you can express that out into the world like is there something for you to give back to the world for um what you have been given on your path and your journey it is also known as the path of what they call the enlightened one so if you look over here you will see where I have the awakening. Uh, seven energy brings in the awakening and also the higher mind. If you look at the seven, you see I have the arrows going up and I have an or going down. Because when you look at the seven and how the seven is made, it is a lightning rod. So this lightning rod is how you can begin to bring heaven down to earth. Like literally, you will be able to bring heaven down to earth, meaning your life can be in peace, it can be in harmony, it can be in flow, it can be in ease and grace. Seven personal year is a time for you to surrender and to go with the flow, understanding that the flow has been created by you. If someone else isn't creating a flow and you're not going with someone else's program, but you are committed to following. If you notice how when we make a seven, it is going to the left. You are following the left hand path. This is said to be the higher consciousness. You are tapping into your higher mind. And you are sitting in the seat of the counselor, right, of the spiritual counselor. So people will be coming to you, asking you questions about different things that are going on uh, in their life. It's going to be important that you sit in the seat of the student and recognize that your heart is going to be leading you and your higher self. This is why I have the books here, Do the Book of Life because you will be encountering those things within the book of life. Also, if you look at the number seven, you see the sun right here. It is the rising sun. So you are rising to the occasion. This is the year that you will rise to the occasion and you will come into another level of your divine purpose on the planet. You will come into that. As with this lightning rod, it is very grounding. So a part of it is touching the earth and the other part is going past the horizon, uh, which is where the sun is, which is representing the Christ consciousness. And that's what you're coming into. Here are the books here because you will literally be writing in your book of life and not just for yourself. That's why there's two books for the book of the world and yourself, which is also known as the Akasic records. And so literally your downloads, your insights you will be getting will be coming from that of a very high and spiritual nature. Now, one of the things that I will tell you that can be a blind spot, if you look at the number seven, look how high it goes. It's one of the highest numbers really that we have within our numerology system. And look how short this path is coming this way, but look how far it goes to come down. And so being in the right spiritual integrity with this energy will take you high up. You will literally, some people even, jump soul ages coming into a seven personal year cycle. So it can take you very high up or it can take you very high down. Yeah. A beautiful, beautiful year of coming into the year of the counselor, the spiritual counselor and another stage of awakening of your higher self that lives within you. So there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. I love it. Stage of 
awakening. Yeah. Personal year of seven. <laughs> you literally just brought two new journals. I love that. And happy born day to you. Happy born day, love. Happy born day, beautiful. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. What time is it? What time is it? Because you, you, you all know how we do. What time is it? What time is it? <laughs> what time is it? We're not going to be up here. Who else has a birthday? I got to get my birthday, people. Where are my birthday, people? Thank you, Mama Nisi. <laughs> Did I get all of my birthday people for this month that's here in the live? If you're here in the live, uh, I wanted to make sure. I just wanted to do something special. If we like this, we'll do more of it. Y'all like my little whiteboard? I then had these things for decades. I've been using them and self-invested for a while. Me, Free Society CEO. Okay, 1031. All right, let's do the math. 1031. That's one, that's four, that's five, that's eight. Mm, that's 13. That's four. I love it. All right. Let's get the work here. Let's get the work here. The year you're coming into a personal year of four. Oops. If I can spell. Good thing I'm on a dry erase board. <laughs> Good thing I'm on a dry erase board. Okay. So the personal year of Four. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hold on, you guys. Almost done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Almost, almost. How we doing? We doing all right? We got those likes up. Uh, we got those likes. <laughs> uh, we got those likes up. Uh, um, hmm. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Wait a minute. Sorry. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to 
I gotta get I gotta get my drawing skills back up. Uh, I got it. Just remind me of my <laughs> Y'all gonna laugh at my little drawings here. Almost done. Okay. All right. Here we go. I think I have everything here that I want to say. All right. Personal year of four. Can you all see this? Um, coming. Where is the person in the personal year of four? Let me bring you, let me bring you up. Where is the personal year of four? Let me go back. Um, who put their put your birthday back in the room? Who was Lance, do you remember who was the personal year of four? You, society. Okay, let me go find you. There we go. All right. Thank you. So here we go. Free society CEO. So the personal year of four. Uh, very, very interesting year because four is what opens the door. Remember, it's going to be a lot of opportunities that's available for you um, if you can really, really tap into this energy. And so a big part of coming into the year of the personal year of four, it is about the mystic builder. And it's step by step by step that you're building brick by brick. Uh, so this is the year personal year of the mystic builder. So there is going to be some things that you're building and you're wanting to bring into um, creation uh, that you want to work on. But the main things for you to remember in this year is about organization. Organization when it comes to foundational things like home and family and day-to-day -day activities and how well do you take care of your body because that is also considered um, the four. Four is also connected to home, right? It's connected to where we live, the house we live in, the home we live in um, as well. So lots of feng shui is one of the ways to keep that energy flowing when you're in a personal year of four. Uh, in the personal year of four, one of the other things is uh, you are crossing a crossroad. If you look at the number four there, you will see there are many crossroads there. But no worries. You see this little hand here? You will have so many helping healers along the way. Um, you will have so many helping hands along the way. So the thing to know about a personal year of four is that you're not meant to do this all by yourself. This is a this is a group um, or collaboration energy when you're in a personal year of four. Four is also connected to Aquarius. And you know, Aquarius is all about the people. It's all about unity. It's all about each one teach one and the collective coming together. It is the sign for all of the zodiac, uh, this energy of Aquarius here. And so know that when you find yourself stuck, ask yourself, have you reached out for help? 
Have you put yourself in positions where you are lending a helping hand to other people? And one of the ways to really accomplish the things that you want to get done in your life is how much you're able to assist and help other people. Not so you can get something back, but truly because it's in your heart to help. Uh, And so that four energy really promises to bring those blessings in uh, there. Um, Because four, you do come to a lot of crossroads because you are choosing the path that you're on. You're leaving the path of the three, which is very social. You're you're coming out of that, uh, that path of the Uh, of the three that was very social, or I should say the path that was prior to four is three. So you have the energy of the one, the new beginning, two, collaboration, uh, unity. And then the three is the trinity that represents the whole family, but it also represents creativity. It represents self-expression. And so by the time you get to the personal year of four, it is the hope that you have learned from everything that has transpired in the past three to four years prior to being into this stage. And it's really an opportunity for you to level up. Keep lots of music around you um, because that's going to help you with all of your downloads coming in. Those two lines that you always see with the sign of Aquarius is what actually represents frequency. So when you see Aquarius, and this is why Aquarius is the sign that represents all of astrology, because it represents the frequency and vibration that we all must learn how to live in. And so Music is going to help you with those activations. It's going to help you with your downloads. It's going to help you with grounding yourself. Organization is going to be key. Again, four is connected with feng shui. So the more organized you can become in your life, the more empowered you're going to feel, the more that you'll be able to connect with your emotions. Uh, You'll be able to connect with the energy coming into your life. And as that continuous happen, I forgot something right here. Let me put my little arrow here um, because it kind of goes to everything. But you see the clock there. It's about you making sure you're mindful of your vibration 24 hours a day, seven days a week, staying in that place that is connected to your heart in love. In this four personal year, um, you are will have the ability to have money flowing to you, but it is a step-by-step process uh, for you to maintain this frequency and this balance. And I know you will. This is a powerful year, Free Society Beats, that you are stepping into this personal year of four. So enjoy four. Remember, four is what opens the door. Many of us know that we can create opportunities in our lies, but sometimes we get to that door and it won't open. In this cycle of four, you as the mystic builder will have the opportunity to open the doors to these opportunities that's coming in front of you. So maybe in this last year, you might have had a lot of opportunities, but it was it was just that you got to that point and either things fell through or it just didn't go as planned in this personal year of four, you will be able to open the door to take advantage of the opportunities. This is about you moving through these crossroads and knowing what to do step by step. Uh, big blind spot for the personal year of four. Uh, It is a year of service, uh, of really, really collaboration, of working with others and using discernment. So there you go. Personal year of four. Woohoo. Let's go to October. I don't know why my pen. Y'all see my pen? Isn't this cute? One of y'all sent this to me, but you didn't. You didn't send me your name. This one is Amethyst. I got Aquamarina. I have Rose Quartz. And two other ones. You you sent me a whole pack of pens. No name. No name. And look at that. 
it's a crystal on the end. Isn't that? Because this is a wand. This is a wand. This is a wand. I love these pens. So thank you to whoever sent it to me. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Eight, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we have eight. That's nine. That's one. Journey, you're in a personal year of 10, of 10. I did that, which is one. You're in a personal year of one, but I'm going to find a unique way to just, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, brother Lance. I'm going to, I'm going to find a way to bring you, oh, who, who is it? The healing coach, your birthday was October the 7th. I'll do you too, sis. I'll get you too. Let me get Journey real quick. I'm going to get Journey out the way here. I'm not out the way, Journey. You know you're not out the way, baby. You you right here. Let me do Journey first. And then I'm going to get the October babies. Let me go to the year. Journey, I'm going to do your breakdown different because I, I did one already. All right. Whew. That took a minute. That took a minute. Oh, welcome on in Janet Lee. Thank you for subscribing. Jocelyn, thank you for subscribing. Thank you and welcome King Simon in the building. Talk about numerologies. He is king in numerology. So if you all haven't checked out King Simon, um, check him out. I always call him King Solomon because he got power like that. <laughs> Amazing brother. And I also had the honor and pleasure of interviewing him as well. So good to have you in the building. Good to see you. All right. So take a look. Can you see that journey? We're journey at. I want to put journey on the, I want to put, put journey on the journey. You, you went over to the pretty matrix. Let me put journey on the screen here. Um, uh, journey, journey, where's your birthday at? I gotta, I don't know why my, my earpiece don't want to do what it's supposed to do here. I don't know where you at, Journey. You're going to have to come up. You're going to have to, there you are. Let me get you right here. All right, Journey, here we go. So I already did one, but I want to give you some other things that are, just connected to this vibration of one, which we get there through the 10 of your birthday, which is unique because all numbers, all frequencies matter. So I want to start here. Number one, it is a cycle of rebirth. Uh, it's a rebirth cycle. Um, when you're coming into that energy of 10, which is really new beginnings, which is one. I want you to think of it this way. This one here, this is instant manifestation. So you are in a cycle where instant things will instantly manifest. That one, I want you to think of it as a wand. I want you to think of yourself, Journey, like having 10 wands that you can just, you know, let me get to my sparkles. You can just grant yourself a wish. Anytime you think of it, you can grant yourself a wish. And that's the cycle you're literally in. Where you see the zero there, it represents boundaries. Because in this personal year of one, you're going to need to have healthy boundaries with yourself. And remember, boundaries are not for other people. They are for you. It's an intention that you have set for yourself, saying that, you know, I'm not going to let things that are happening outside of me upset me. I'm not going to let someone provoke me uh, into reacting. I'm going to make sure that I take time to respond. So this coming into this, and you probably have been feeling this, well, usually I tell people four to five months, just depending on where you are, that's how far out you will feel the shift when you're coming into this new vibrational energy of your personal year number. These personal year numbers are like someone giving you, it's like a GPS system. Them. Even though you may know where you're going, you may have been able to look at the blueprint, the map, and see where you're traveling in the world. When we have the GPS system, it always sort of kind of forewarns us. It lets us know ahead of time. And in this personal year of one, 
that you're coming into, you're going to be having a very intuitive antenna. That antenna is going to be very, very highlighted for you, where you're going to be able to pick up these impressions. So listening to your intuition is top tier key. The other thing is I call this uh, personal year one uh, coming in through the 10, the cosmic designer, because you literally are laying the seeds. This is a flower in case y'all didn't know my drawing. These are the roots. You are laying, see this, the flower is dropping seeds. You are laying seeds for the next 10 years of your life. Uh, so this is really a full circle. You have completed a full circle, a full cycle, and you are going into a completely new beginning of a full cycle. Make sure you're taking with you only those things that you want to plant seeds for. Because again, you're the cosmic designer. This is your world. You're getting an opportunity to design. Don't forget the one and the zero. Uh, the one represents the sperm and then the zero here. So another thing that you must carry with you into this personal year of one, really it can be found in all, all of the numbers, but really when it comes to one and zero is love because this is the binary code. This is everything that created everything. It is the alpha and omega. Uh, this is the cycle that you must lead with love and integrity. Uh, it requires that, right? Um, let me see what else did I forget. Instant manifestation. Oh, this is the time for you to start new things. It is a cycle to start new things. A great opportunity to start new things. Remember when your birthday come, count 52 days. You have 52 days to give you, it's almost like um, being in track and field and you're on that inside lane. You have an advantage at first. And if you align yourself correctly, you'll be able to move through and create a whole lot faster. The other thing, um, the personal year of one and particularly the 10 is also a time where the universe is telling you to wake up. In essence, to wake up, to grow up on planet Earth. It's time for you to go to the next level. So think about where you are in your life. Think about those things you're working on to elevate within yourself. And it's time for you to do that internal work and go to the next stage of your consciousness. So congratulations in being in that personal year of one. Woohoo! Happy born day. Happy born day journey. Yeah, happy born day. So you can put that in anyone else who's coming into a personal year of one. Okay, October the 7th. Let's do the math. Personal year. Yeah. All right. Whew. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Can you can you all see that? Can y'all read? Can y'all read my chicken hieroglyphs here? All right. So the personal year of seven, I'm gonna add on to what um I shared before earlier. Number one, the personal year of seven. This is the year of the spiritual teacher. Uh, this is the year of the spiritual teacher. And again, if you look at that seven, that seven is a lightning rod. I kept that in there. It's a lightning rod because literally you are bringing down what they call heaven to earth. You're bringing down those sparks. This is the lightning. You're having lightning flashes of consciousness that is coming in. Um, many people associate that number seven with Jesus. And it's also connected with a lot of spiritual teachers on the planet. Not to mention, it is the number of luck. Um, so that seven cycle really is bringing you into the energy of luck. You understand? So it's a lucky cycle for you. Uh, so when you get those nudges and those intuitions about taking action on something or doing something, 
do it um, because uh, this is when things can come in your favor. I want you to see this here. This is also the year that they, um, you see the cross there. This is where you lay down the cross. And that is symbolic of you laying down the cross and taking up the crown. Um, laying down the cross is the act of releasing all burdens, of releasing all um you know, fears, doubts. We don't often think of laying down the cross that way, but any kind of worry, any kind of fear, especially when it deals with those things of the external world. Uh, if you look over here, this is a little house, or at least I tried to draw a little house, because the seven cycle is a very inward journey. Your transformation is happening on the internal side, and this is how you are going to be able to bring the crown into everything that you do, what is required in this personal year of seven to maximize all the potential is to have a pure heart and a clear mind uh, to bring those two there. These are the alphabets because all of the alphabet is connected with the personal year of seven um, because the words that you speak is the words that are going to be created. Uh, so you have to stay in alignment with that truth. If you look at the seven, it is straight lines for you to come in there. So spiritual integrity is required uh, with the year of the spiritual teacher. So again, you will be called upon um, for people to, in your life, really looking to you to give guidance, to give understanding, to give some of the things that you have gone through. And I know you're already doing that. Uh, as the healing coach, but this is you going to a whole nother level of being able to do that. Um, so the transformation is happening inside. What also comes with that seven is the sun. And the sun is for uh, responsibility through realization. And so this is a very responsible cycle that you're in because words truly do manifest and it's all about the truth the undeniable divine truth as it relates to god the universe and the most high and you sort of walking that path of truth this is the yin and yang symbol here so it's a year to really kind of be in balance uh, with things, not doing too much external work. You're going to pretty much feel like you want to go inward and really use discernment with that to go inward, um, because those are going to be the times that you're getting those major downloads that are coming inside of you. And it requires you to do that internal alchemy, that internal work. That's where the responsibility comes in, because ultimately this is the year that you will get the crown. And this is the spiritual teacher of the personal year of seven. So congratulations, happy belated born day to you. Woo. All right, y'all. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And much love to you. Much love to you. Yeah. So there you go. And just how you feel about the energetic year that you're coming into. It's another guiding tool that you can use on your path and your journey. 